Well, you guys, today we're going to be taking a look at how we can test PC memory for bad RAM errors that you may be getting uh, when you're playing games or rendering videos or just standing uh, idle on the desktop. It all of a sudden crashes and you get a blue screen and you want to learn how to troubleshoot this issue. Now, this is sometimes due to a RAM issue and you can use Passmark's free RAM testing tool to test your RAM. So basically go to Passmark, I'll leave the link in the video description for you. You can download their Memtest 86 software and you'll be able to create a bootable USB flash drive. I'll show you how to do it, it's pretty straightforward and easy to do. I'll take you through step by step just showing you how to create your bootable USB flash drive and then how to boot to that device and then we can test our memory for any sort of uh, issues with that memory. So I've downloaded the uh, software here. What I'm going to do is open up this file. Once I've got it open, you'll see a bunch of files inside here. I need to drag these into a folder onto my desktop. So let's quickly go ahead and copy all the files inside here. I'm just going to highlight all of these. Now you can obviously extract them or do it which way you like. There's many ways to do this, but just get it into a folder so it's on your desktop. Now once all these files are across, you'll see memtest86-usb.img and also imageusb.exe. That is the file that we need to click on to run the executable program so we can create our bootable USB flash drive. So once this window populates, just plug in your USB flash drive and you can see it detected up the top. Just put the tick in it. Step two, we need to make sure that we've got right image to USB drive. And also step three, we need to locate the image file, which is in that folder. You can leave it with post image verification on if you wish, and this will check to make sure the image is correct on the USB flash drive. But once you've got those settings all done, you can click on the right button and then click yes here. Now this will overwrite the USB flash drive and format all the data on that so it will be lost. So if you've got any data on there, now is the time to back out and stop before you continue. But if you're okay with that, let it run and it will then create a bootable USB flash drive with Passmark uh, MEM86 on it. Now they keep this software updated on a regular basis, so it's gonna be compatible with all the versions of your memory modules that you may be having in your computer or laptop and you can run this pretty much on laptops or uh, desktop computers. Whether they're gaming computers, just standard um, office computers, it will work with all those machines. So let me just show you here what I'm gonna be doing here. I've got a laptop here. Now this, if this is a laptop or a desktop, it really doesn't matter. We've got a USB flash drive here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take out uh, the memory from the system and just leave one module in there. Now you can scan this with all of the memory in the computer if you wish and leave it running for at least four passes. Now the problem with doing that is if it detects an error, it won't tell you which stick it is on and then you would have to then go through and scan every stick singly. So it doesn't really matter. So if you want to do that, uh, that way you can do. It's entirely up to you. But I'm gonna take one of the memory modules out and I'm gonna run a scan with that one memory module in there. Now you need to set this to do a scan uh, for four passes at least, and this will take some time. And if it comes back clean with no errors on it after four passes, you know that memory module is fine. You can then remove it and place in the other memory stick and do another four passes on that one as well. And if that comes back all clear after four passes and no errors show up on the screen, you're pretty much good to go. Uh, and the memory is fine. But if you do get errors, you may want to replace that memory module. So I've got my USB flash drive plugged into the computer now, and what I'm gonna do is go into the BIOS and make sure I boot to that USB flash drive as my first bootable device. This will then take us to their Memtest software. As you can see here, it's now loaded up on the screen. And you've got a bunch of settings down the left-hand side where it says system info, test selection by pushing T, address range, and so on. You can just run start test from here if you wish by clicking S and it will start the test and run a default test. You can go into test selection if you're more advanced and choose a, a particular test that you want to run, okay? 
and there's ones from uh, 0 to 13 and this is the number of passes on here now on the free version I think it's a maximum of four passes that you're allowed to do and that's normally uh, pretty much enough to find out whether there's a problem with that now the hammer test is going to be uh, for extreme overclockers and also to test the actual bank on the motherboard itself to see whether that is bad as well uh, but you won't really need to run that on a normal test for memory errors so let's go ahead and push s to start the test and i'm going to run this and let it run now you should see on the screen uh, a little area here which says passes one of four and errors zero down the bottom here there will be a bunch of errors that come up if you've got issues with your ram now up the top here you've got pass and test passes in green and this is normally when it gets to 100 percent pass that will be one pass completed okay and it will move on to the second pass and then the third and so on it takes a bit of time to complete four passes the test part is just the test that is going through a bunch of different tests that you may have selected to run tests on that memory module now normally when you've got a really serious memory problem where you're getting a blue screen of death you're getting freezing on the screen and stuff like that normally these errors will be detected within one pass and these errors will show up and there will be quite a lot of them and this means that that memory module is bad and you can swap it out and replace it on the other end if you've got intermittent uh, memory problems where you're just getting the occasional blue screen and it's an intermittent issue you may have to run this scan for an hour or so just to uh, detect that intermittent error and sometimes in some cases intermittent errors are really hard to detect and you need to run an overnight test and this is recommended if you want to run an overnight test with your memory you're not using the computer at night time while you're in bed you can leave this running and leave it with more than four passes and let it run throughout the night and it will detect any sort of intermittent problems with that memory and you can normally determine whether that problem is related to your memory because if it comes back clean in the morning with no problems at all then you know it's not a memory issue now you could run that test with all your memory modules in the computer if you wish for the first night and see if there's any problems if it comes back clean in the morning you don't have a memory issue if it's another type of issue where you've got like an intermittent issue it will still show itself uh, in the morning after you've done a full scan over all those memory modules in the computer if you want to run one scan at a time with one memory module in the computer then that's fine it's at least that way you're going to know that memory stick is good and you can normally weed out the bad stick and you can replace that stick with a known good stick which you can purchase match paired sticks are always the best way to go don't use mix the match because you could run into problems so let's talk about some of the solutions that you can do to try to rectify memory or RAM problems with light blue screening. Make sure you go into your BIOS and turn off XMP. Sometimes having XMP can uh, cause an issue uh, with some RAM and uh, you may need to find out whether it's compatible with that board. So just turn off XMP and see if that uh, stability comes back. Also, you may want to set it to default settings and turn off any sort of RAM timings that you've got set or anything like that because if you're overdoing it, it may cause instability and this can be flagged as bad memory. So you may want to just go in here and leave it on auto and put it back to default settings. Sometimes what can happen is some memory likes to have a little bit more voltage run through it just to get it to run a little bit more sweeter. And sometimes if it's say for instance 1.2 volts, you might need to put 1.25 volts just to give it that little bit of stability and sometimes this can resolve a lot of issues with that memory you can do a bit of research on it but don't overdo it with a voltage too much voltage can cause a problem so you need to make sure that it is a voltage issue and not other issues related to that memory before you start adding voltage to memory okay Another thing that you can do is flash the uh, BIOS with the latest uh, firmware because sometimes this can fix a lot of known uh, memory issues and motherboard manufacturers know this and they will release uh, a BIOS update so it will make uh, that BIOS 
more stable with the RAM that you are using. Now, these are some of the things that you can try if it's not a really bad memory stick and it's a, an issue where you've been overclocking or you've been trying to ramp up uh, the uh, RAM's timings and also voltages on your memory. Also, you can flag the address ranges as bad and it will normally skip those bad ones, but it's always best to just replace the memory, in my personal opinion, with a new memory module and that way you will get a much more stable um, system okay so that's what we generally do when we find issues with memory we generally replace it with known good memory and try to get match paired and the same memory as what's in the system all, already there you can check the little number on the side there's normally a little tiny number on there just make sure you get match paired uh, memory and you should be pretty much good to go from there Anyway, that's about it for this video. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. If you enjoy this content, then give it a thumbs up. Also, leave us a comment down in the comments section below if you have any questions, or you can pop on our Discord server for any sort of advice or a chat over this Easter holidays. Anyway, have a great Easter, and I shall see you again for another video real soon. Bye for now. Now, if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the big red subscribe button on my YouTube channel and hit the bell notification button next to that to be notified when we upload new videos.